Alléluia. 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 We greet you all that have joined us via the live visual broadcast stream and you that are listening on the live audio stream or whatever capacity you have joined us here at Tashua Community, your ways congregation as we gather on this Shabbat to celebrate his Shabbat haunts. What a great blessing. That is Yisrael. As we are reminded when the day shall come whereby we will not have to be taught and instructed in the ways of Yah. Then there shall be the Shirem, the songs of delight out of the bosom of Yah, out of his labam, his appetite, his passion, his desire. And what a day, as the old Kiroshim will say, what a day it shall be, because there is no other day like that day. And the sad thing about it, it is not beyond our approach to ascertain that with the mind of Yoshua HaMashiach, mind that gravitates to everything that speaks of the dynamics of the power of the great Abaya to illustrate unto us the dynamic power of his excellence that is beyond our perverted mindsets to understand to grasp to ingest it to digest it it is beyond our ability to apprehend because of one thing it is our own sin the sins of our bosom that we reject his Torah. We are a people, a nation that are inspired by me, myself, and I. We're certainly not inspired by the instructions of Torah. That's why our battles are so persistent in our lives. And we tend not to overcome. We can do all things pertain to Chai, the Chai Yid, through Yoshua HaMashiach. That's why we as Yisra'ya, we should have the Hukha. We should be wise in the skillfulness of Torah. But I know we think we are, but we don't have a damn thing. Any time a man thinks he possesses something, he doesn't have a damn thing. Anytime he makes comparison between another, when a man says that to me, I know he doesn't possess a damn thing. I don't give a damn who he is. It is amazing how that the world, and again we greet you all uh, listening. We have an Ark, a precious Ark, Charles Davis, there in California. He often says to me, he will call, and many of the times I don't even speak to him or have the chance to talk to him and he will leave a message send preacher Reach, I know you're tired I just wanted to say Yabra because you fed me so well I was able to eat of the pallets of Yah and so I was able to digest the abundance of his fruitfulness, his peri. And of course, I will call him back and say to him, as we have received this morning from him, a tremendous offering. And he will always say this to me. He will say, Re'ach, the way that I am being fed, that is simply not enough. I should do more. And I will do more. And I don't, when men talk, I tend not to, to uh, rely upon their verbiage. But there are men that talk that you know that there's substance to that man. You know, it's real. He is one of the few that I've met that I know that there is much substance to him. And I can appreciate him. So you that are gathered there, 
Los Angeles, California with our Ach uh, Davis that have joined us on the live broadcast. We greet you all wherever you're listening, all of our friends and supporters. We greet you all, Yisraya, in Yoshua's mighty name. We greet our Zachin Tayonia there in Memphis, Tennessee, and the labor that Yah has placed in his bosom. We pray that all is well with them and that it generates the very power of his Ru'ach and that their labor, even though they may think that it is of vanity, it is shav, but it is of great substance, Yisrayan. He sends tremendous offerings here every month, Ara'ach, Toyonia. And he often says this to me. He says to me, when there are times that I go to the archives, and he goes all the time, he says, I draw from the particular that, that is needed for this action in my life at the moment. And he would say, he said, you know, Re'ak, when I listen to you, I'm much older than you, and he is. And he will say this, and I don't speak in any kind of boastfulness, damn boastfulness. We're all clay. But it's one thing that Yisra'ya does. It tends to negate the hand of Yah in the midst of the nation. And thinks that as Skora of Baithan, as they withstood Moses, that they were of his same equal in knowledge, but yet they were not. And every man thinks that he possessed, and they don't possess a damn thing. And this elderly man will say to me, he says, for you to be as young as you are and the wisdom that you speak with, and I'm older than you, and yet I am not perplexed, but it is a great blessing to hear someone to speak. No, not every man is speaking like me. And that's the damn truth, whether you buy it or not. You're boasting. No, I'm telling you the truth. I hear too many, and the few that call, just like Achia Akhob. He says to me, I've never heard a man, he's much older than me, speak with such simplicity and clarity. And that's what I speak with. And so this is a generation that loves to compare. I was reading an article, I'm not going to read it. It's of the secular nature. It is Dwayne Wade of the Miami Heat basketball team and he speaks accolades concerning lebron james and these are his words he is just better than us all he's a gear ahead of us and the wickedness of yisrael that they do not even know how to appreciate one that everyone is not gifted to do certain things show me a place like this in america in yah's name Please, show me one other place, just one place. And I've sought for a place like this more than you have. Show me one other place that operates in the Ru'ach in the name of Yah. And that Yah has formed through a simplicity format, a nation, a gathering of people, although we're few. Show me one place. Please, any of you, show me another man that has done this and that walks in the truth, my young Achot. I look all the time. I cannot find it. Period. And so every man does not possess the same hukha, the wisdom and the power to minister. I want to say this. I'm going to preach. Don't worry. I've seen all the years, young men, that when they come, the first thing they want to do is challenge me. I don't care if it's basketball. If I'm in the gym doing something, they're coming there. Oh, I can't do that well. I recall one day, because there was an exercise that I do, I still do it today. 
When I do the exercise, I do 1,000 reps every set. Do you understand? I put 90 pounds on the weight machine, then I put another 5 pounds on the bar. So that's 95 plus pounds. I watch individuals coming there, oh, I can do that too. You can with 20 pounds or 25 for 15, 20. But I'm talking about 1,000 reps without stopping. You understand? And so even on the basketball court, of course, my Ach Abner, he dusts me off quite well. Yesterday, I had to back him down on two baskets to have a chance, but he still won 12-11 and 12-11. So my reprisal was, uh, I will have on my tennis shoes next time. And we will not use your basketball, we will use mine. How about that? And so this is a generation among those, especially of the dark hue of skin color. It's one thing about many other ethnicity of people. They will regard those that are leaders for the purpose of the cause to be ascertained. So everyone thinks that he or she is a leader or they possess the same characteristics and quality of character as the one that we tend to want to challenge that's the way we think we're damn fools i will say this i'm going to teach profound truth for you today of all the men that i've met i've been submissive to i have never compared myself with them to say well uh, i'm as wise as you i worked at one of the largest corporations in the world at ibm there were those that were much younger than me. And my inroad and strength to their confidence was brutally and totally honest. And I would say to them, I'm an ignorant man. I'm ignorant. And they would apologize because of my simplicity of honesty. But this is a damn generation that thinks, and they can't teach, most men can't teach a damn thing. They do not have the substance to teach the power, the ability. We talk an excellent game, but there is no substance there. It is one thing that we must understand. When I understand words, I say, yeah, we missed the value in the importance of what is being said. As we use the word ish, we began to define it because we have heard someone say it. And then we defined it from that aspect. But I am a notorious etymologist. I search out the nooks and the crannies to understand definitives, what it means to application, the certainty of that meaning. Now, there are not many men that do that. We may say we do, but there are not many. And I've got the calls, the emails. Uh, I'm a mighty man like you. Well, you're not much of a damn man if you're like me then. You're fragile, you're weak, you have no character or strength because all that I do comes from you. I'm a man like Yoshua HaMashiach. I walk in the strength, the power of Almighty Yah. I walk in the assurance of that. And I will not capitulate, not for one damn man, none. And I say that to you that are listening. There was a precious Ahot that called me. On Thursday morning, she called and left a message. And when people do that, I know that there is something there. And so she calls back again. I believe she said that there are 13 or 15 of them. And so the question that she asked, I said to her, you have not listened to me. She says, no, I have not. Because I have just gotten the internet for the first time on Wednesday, yesterday. And so as she begins to search Yahweh's truth, 
she finds a website. 15, that's comparative to what's here. She has never listened to me. And I said to her, I said, I want to tell you that I am not one that bemoves the people and teach things that cater to their damn flesh. People think that I'm hard. They don't even... Yorkshire said to his Talmudin, if you love me, I want you to eat this truth, uh, what he would say in the body, and I want you to drink this dumb. And they said, hell, that's a hard thing. Too hard. Something that simple. Something that simple. We think it's difficult. I don't give a damn if men think I'm hard. I am hard. I'm hard on me. I drive me. I drive my appetite. I drive everything there is about me. When you're teaching or you know, I'm not defending me. I'm letting us know that this generation, it is one that thinks it knows Yah, but it has no concept. Because if they knew Yah, they would know a messenger of Yah. If you had known the Abba, Yahshua said, you would have known me. You would have known that I am of the Abba. You understand? And this is a generation that doesn't understand that. I hear it from here and there in the speech. Yet this holds there in the community that she lives. Yesterday before the broadcast, I looked and she had sent a wonderful offering for the help of the labor of the ministry of Yan Yoshua. And her closing words to me, she says, not ever hearing me preach, just simply the words. And I will strain out individuals regardless to whom they are. Whether it's on the telephone, whether they give a lot of money, whether they give no money, it makes me no different because we're dealing with the, the entity of the house of Yisrael, his nation. It is one thing that we all are weak. Hell no, we're not all weak. It's almost like an adulterous man that thinks that every damn man commits adultery. You've been a damn dirty dog, so you think, well, we all do it, you're a damn lie. We all don't do it. Yeah. It's a damn lie, Yisrael. Yeah. Well, all women are that. That's a damn lie, oh, hold, son. Yeah. Well, we all got our shortcomings. No, we all don't have our shortcomings. Just say you got yours. If you, my friend, if we could get the moat out of our own eyes, we could see clearly how to assist our art. My strength of maturity in life has always been observing men of strength and character and incorporating those things into my life because I saw it work for them and I knew that it would work for me. It made no difference who the man was. You understand? So it is in the spiritual realm. But we are all alike. That's a damn lie. The Torah says as Eob, there was none like him. The Torah says Abraham, there were none like him. The Torah says when Nebuchadnezzar brought in those Hebraic men into his house, there were only four that would distinguish it. They had wisdom and knowledge like no one else. When Kepha, when they needed those to guard the house of Yisrael, there were only six men that had the power that were full of the Ruach and full, full of the wisdom of Yah. Not all the men. This is a damn wicked generation. When I see that in the world that they recognize what is gifted among them, uh, we as a nation, we frankly do not give a damn. We can't even recognize the gift of Yah just like they did not recognize Yahshua or the messengers of Yah. We've never done that. That's why they would kill the Navi'im in Yerushalayim. I am a student of the Torah. And I will never stop being a student. I'm a student of man. I study men. I study their ways, their conversation, their laughter. I study everything about men. That's all right. I don't, want, I don't like that. And although I may not say anything, but I study men. But I study the Ahot as well. I can tell you what is appropriate for beautiful bath. As a young man, you have been with me since day one. Although evangelist Hartsfield did me wrong, you have never heard me say a denigrating remark against that man. And no one here has. 
Never. That's not my mode of operandi. But as a young man, as ignorant as I was then, and the same display of ignorance now, he says to me one day, Reak, Brother Roberts, my Ark, and he was a man that had preached all over the United States. He's our preach all over these states. This did not swell my head. Accolades don't swell my head because they don't mean a damn thing to me. This is the same man that turned against me. But that didn't mean I turned against him. You understand? He said, I've traveled the United States. I have not met men twice your age. Even at your young age. And I had no one at that time to teach me. That's why when I found this man to teach me, I served him. I would sit at his feet. I would kiss his feet because I loved what he was teaching me. I had never heard that from any man. And I served him like a faithful soldier as Uriah did thy weight. To the point that I would give up everything. My electricity would be turned off because I would give every dime. What I had nothing to give, I would sell my vehicles and walk to work. I still love walking now. You want to ride, Rayak man? Get away from me. I don't need a ride. If I wanted one, I could ride. Everywhere I go around here, I walk. I walk. I'm going over there too. That's all right. You drive, let me walk. And so here this man introduced in my life at a pivotal time in my life. And he was a great blessing to me. He was a strength to me. And I served him faithfully. That sometimes we would come home with all of our monies. We would take every dime. And it was a great delight and a great joy to give him everything. I wanted to make sure his children had their things or the things before even my issue in my house you understand and i served him faithfully you understand never tried to compare myself with him i, I don't compare myself with other men I i'm going to preach in a moment I, I was in the gym the other day and i do go to the gym yes i do because that's the you, you know the words issue or ish the very prominent definitive of that word is one thing. It is masculinity. That is the prominent pronouncing of the word ish. That's why there are not many men. We have the similitude of a man. But that doesn't mean that he is a man. It is of masculinity and strength. Not only strength and the ruach, but strength physically as well. So I do go to the gym. And I'm not going to stop talking about that. And I will go until I can't go no more. You understand? And so when Akshimri came in, I knew that uh, he's always at a Tasmanian devil pace. He works that way. So I said, I tell you what, I will go along with him. Every set he does, I'm with him. He didn't know what I was doing. So I let him finish that. Boom, I do mine. By the time I finish mine, he's on the next. He does it. He doesn't rust now. Boom. So I'm on mine. Boom. He does one. Boom. I'm behind him. Of course, I wore out mine. And I say to my arc, I said, uh, I'm leaving at this time so we can get ready for prayer. He says, all right. Now, this was a sure sign to me that... Uh, I had worked at a pace along with him uh, that should have been rewarding unto me. If I wanted a piece of pound cake, I should have eaten a piece. Because when I said that, he went to something that was less demanding. You understand? So I knew he was wore out. I didn't have to say anything to him because I was wore out, Israya. And he showed me right then. Uh, what man you understand so my strength is not compared to his strength my wisdom my knowledge my actions i do not judge myself because of his failures or because of your failures 
I judge myself because you're sure never fail. According to that standard, any other standard is not worth a damn thing. So if you judge yourself or your worth, I had a man to call me, I'm a, I'm, I'm a man of God just like you, wise like you. I said, then you're not worth a damn. I said, then you are a damn weak fledgling of a thing. Are you not? He got quiet. He couldn't respond because he was a jackass. You understand? Because a wise man knows that he has appertained nothing. He has no power to retain. You hear something today, hell tomorrow, you've forgotten it. So we give all to the unto Almighty Yah, for he is my strength. And I am a warrior not to defend me, damn, die weed. He's not worth a damn. All men are not alike. All women are not shiftless and lazy as hell. All men are not adulterers. And I've heard men, we all, they all do it. You're a damn liar, man. I have never done it. So you want to incorporate everyone into that genre because you have failed? Her? And because of your weakness, you think everyone is weak as you? Hell no. Hell no. I will not buy it. I will not allow any man to put that in my mind. The Torah tells us to mark, to oath, to take upon the same perception as a man that is to me, a perfect man. So the, then there must be perfect men for Yah to tell us to mark them. They're perfect in the order of Yah. They're perfect in the mannerism of Yah. Why? Because every, every time they fall, they fall upon the Torah. It doesn't mean they fall into sin, Yisra'ah. They fall upon the Torah. My bath, you understand? So Yah commands us, the wisdom of Dawi says, you mark that perfect man. For the in or the kids, the kids, the kids, the kids, the results, the far results of that man is shalom. Hell, I will raise hell this moment here, and the next second then there's shalom. Sure it is. No, I'm not going to stop using the word hell and damn. I don't know if the group down there that called me, if they're listening, I sent all the links for them to join us in service and everything. I said, you join us here and listen to us. And the cry was, where is a messenger here, a close by? So I asked them, how far are you from this city? They said, 150 miles, but they are willing to drive that far. Of all the men I've met, and I can say that conclusive, those that I've met in different cities, uh, to put them, I watched that when I put that precious group. I know, I knew that they were not mature in the ways of Yah, but they left everything from that city. They pulled up all their roots. They had decent jobs. And they moved south because I trusted this damn bastard, the coward. And he did them wrong. And my heart has always felt, I said, Yah, if I ever see them, I will apologize. Because I put them under the hands of a bastard. A damn howling. A damn dog. Because I always trust man. Sure I do. You can't, you can't take me for nothing. Even when I was in the world, when men took me, they didn't take me for nothing. Because there was nothing that they took. But there was money. Or those things, there was nothing. So you what are you going to take? You can't take this life. This warrior, this Geber mentality. That there's a cause that's greater than me. And it's much greater than you. And I will not allow anything to circumvent that. When I hear men say things, I say, I know they have not searched the Torah. They say things. I say, they haven't. They don't know even what the Torah says about that matter. They speak out of emotionalism. And most men today speak that way. When we think that we're something and we're not worth a damn. If anything, you esteem the other. Bless you, my God. 
जो आप I'm ready to battle. I don't give a damn who it is. I love my precious Isha, but it doesn't mix in a difference who it is. I will straighten you out. It's a sad thing. This is a generation that think that it cannot be straightened out in any matter. We need the Musa of Yah, his rebuke, his correction. Quote rebukes me. Well, your actions rebukes me. I say this that I'm going to teach the dirty bastard that we were around at one season. I don't regret that. Down here in Walterboro, he's a dirty bastard, and he would say this. And times I would go visit. He would say this. It's one thing about Re'achtai, which he studies me carefully, and I did. I would study the man. He would stop. Look at him. He would say, "He is the only one that grasps and lay hold to the words I say, because I knew what you were saying, you damn devil." And so I had no problem rebuking that bastard. No one had to tell me. I knew. But he would say this. This is one thing about Riach Taweed. He walks with the ruah that is lawful unto Yah. You don't have to correct him. And there are men you don't. There are children. Evangelist Hartsfield had a beautiful son. He says to me, "Ruah, I had to whip that boy one time. I was in a meeting, and he was acting erratic, out of character. I told the people, and believe me, he would do that. I've seen him do it too many times. He said, 'You all just keep your minds on.'" Of course, you know what he would say. He said, "I took that boy out and I whipped his ass. I broke me a switch off a tree out there and I whipped his ass." He said, "When he came back in, he sat beside his mother. I've never had one problem out of that boy. He was 16 years old. He kissed the girl. It troubled him so much. He went to his daddy, said, 'Dad, I kissed this girl. I can't hide it from you anymore.' It was a passionate kiss." And so not all children need the same kind of correction. They need correction, but their temperament, their balance is different. Not all men have the same characteristic of strength. Not all men can lift three hundred pounds or five hundred. How many men listening to me that will hear this broadcast can lift five hundred pounds? A press seven, eight hundred thousand pounds. Not many. No way. Whether it's with legs or arms. Okay then, all right. So every man is not cut out of the same cloth. That's a fact. What about you, preacher? What? Don't challenge me. I just leave it at that. How about that? That speaks enough, doesn't it? Not every woman the same. I used to say about this man here. Hell, I didn't talk to him when he would come in my presence. I didn't talk about Yah to him. I did not try to impose one thing on him, yeah. and that's a fact. How you doing, man? Was that it? Sure is right. Sure is right. Didn't try to engage to show him. Wasn't showing him a damn thing. He was dealing with a man. I did try to do that, and I would always tell you all that that man, when Yah lays the hooks in him, I said he will be a man. I trust his words he said to me. Hell, there are those that say they've been in the way of Yah for many years. I would trust his words. I trust them. 
I find me a hypocrite, you that have been with me, if I have not said that I'm a damn liar. Didn't say a damn thing to him. Didn't even conversate with him. Didn't need no conversation with him. Sure it is. And that is the truth. And I lied not. I see beyond the veneer of an individual, his gab and his talk. I see beyond that. There was one that stood in this pulpit. And most of them, all of them with their arousing assessment of me. And I would say, yeah, I hate when they do that. This man is a prophet. I'm not a prophet. I'm a messenger. Now the bizurach, the bizurach, the teaching, the values of Torah, that's it. I'm not mighty. I'm not a strong man. I can do all things through Yoshua HaMashiach. That strengthens me to submit, to be submissive. You don't have to tell me things to do. I've always been that way. On my jobs, I was that way. When I worked at IBM, Dave Roberts is a self-starter. He needs no instructions. Never. They would allow me to come to work at 6 a.m., not the others. But I could come at that time and leave at 2.42 with the others. My manager shared things with me that they would share with no one else. And it depends on what part of the country you came from, it determined your salary. My manager said to me, he said, hell man, there are only two people that makes more money than you here. That's Jeff Wotowicz from Denver, Colorado, and me. And there were people I looked, there were people who had been there 25 years. I was appalled and amazed. The hell if they did them like that, what would they do to me in 25 years? I knew I didn't want to stay there. You've never had to tell me twice because I hear it. You don't have to tell me that. This man is a prophet. The last one I said to my Ishaw, I did not say it to you all. I say it. I won't tell you. I said to her when the man first came here, I said, I hate to say it, but that's the one before him two times over. But I said, nevertheless, although I know he's that way, I won't judge him on that. We will see the end results. Look at the results. I said that to her. Well, I didn't say it to you because I knew that if I said it to her, her mouth was sealed. Don't have to worry about it going anywhere. She knows better. Of course, she has to contend with me. So are there any mighty men? Are there any men of value? Are there any men of strength? Are there any bath like the one of Missionary 31? That's beautiful. Not the love of her husband does safely bon tank, trust in her and the reason why because he has no need of spoil because she shall satisfy his life all the days of his life over 35 years this is the only woman I've ever known no other woman and if I wanted to be a real bow wow of a dog, I'm not talking about old women. You know, you say that to men, they think, you look at them, they think, well, I could have done the same. No, not the kind of women that were after me. No, you couldn't have. Say what you want to. Oh, I could, no. This is the only woman. All men can't say that. And this is through my religious profiteering. There were things that I would read in the book I knew it was right. 
And I've never gone beyond the boundaries of that. Never! So we must have men in the midst that Yah has entrusted. He doesn't trust every man with the same skills to, to be orators. He has called many, but he has, boy, he has selected just mi'ut, just a few, just a few, just a few. And that's a fact. So all men are not drug heads. Everybody lies. No, say you are a liar. Deal with you. Huh? Even when a man lies to me, I still, I, I still, uh, I, I receive his vow. It makes me no different. It turns out to be a lie like, you, you lied, man. Well, I didn't mean it that way. I say, well, don't, don't worry about that. Let, let's go on from here. All right. Let, let's move on. Come on. Can I say this before I preach? The precious Aki's out there in the grounds. <clears throat> he had moved to Charlotte, North Carolina from Detroit, Michigan. He had been there all his life. And one day, I loved his fellowship because I loved the man. I would bypass one house and this house just to go to his house. Sometimes I would go there twice in one day. I love being around him. Oh, he was Reak. You, you, you need some juice? What, what do you want? Oh, Reak. Tell me what you want. Oh, get him some of that. You want some of that? Get out of my face, man. Shut your mouth. So I talked to him. And one day, because I liked his driving, there are not many men I like their driving now, but his driving I like. We got some because I won't mention names they're used to setting up high above the roadway and and they and they're skillful I, I, don't try to figure this out okay and say the so they moved as though they're moving a rig and they move with great uh, preciseness and like get over man that, oh i got time to get over i'll leave it like that you understand <clears throat> And so this day, the Ark and I, we were together. He had his Michigan tides still on his car. He had been here six months. They only give you 30 days. And so all of a sudden, we see this light. Boop, 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 boop. I knew what it was. He pulls him over. He pulls us over. He says... Uh, to him, I see your driver's license. He still had Michigan driver's license. Of course, I'm sitting there. I knew what was going down. He said, in the state of North Carolina, if one resides here in residency, you have 30 days to make all your transactions to transition according to the state laws the insurance and all of that he said how long have you been here he said oh i haven't been here 30 days i didn't say a thing i said he'd been here six months i didn't say anything i sat there he said all right make sure you get this done he did not give him a ticket so I'm sitting there in his vehicle and as soon as the officer rolled away he sat there for a moment and he just began to weep he did what do you do in a matter of that degree and I said to him my friend if anyone has not lied before, show me the man. I said, I don't condemn you, but don't tell a lie like that again. Just tell the truth. I recall the situation that one had betrothed this woman. 
I knew he shouldn't have, but my heart was with him because I loved the man. And of course, she did some very out of the order things dealing with him. And so one day she said she wanted to come back. Well, of course, everyone, we had many more people then that we have now. And some of these was sacrilegious, self-righteous Jezebels and fools. That's why they're out there doing what they're doing. And I will never forget sitting in the office that day, that morning. I saw them come in. I knew the woman. You could see the shame of the burden on this woman. And I knew what she was going to encounter from the people. And at that time I had a black little globe about that big. It was granite. It's a beautiful piece of artwork. Beautiful globe. All the nations on it were very distinctive. Laid out. And I had that thing always sitting up on the rust. It was heavy too. That thing was heavy. It was not lightweight. It was a heavy globe. Big. And so I said, Yo, how do I deal with this matter? You could see the woman, she was weeping. She was drenched in tears. The agony of the shame. You can tell when they're shameful because her back was like that. And I saw the sacrilegious, self-righteous ones. I knew who they were. Because I'm a bold man, sometimes people discount my boldness for arrogance or I'm hard. They do that. I don't give a damn. I'm a man of assurance. I know who I am. And I recall Yisrael I came in and everyone's quiet. I came up on the rostrum. I wasn't going to let her get by. I began to deal with her. And the more I did, the tears fell profusely. And then when they began, <laughs> that's mourning, that's supplication. I picked up the globe and I said, she's wicked. She has done wickedly. She is a defiled thing. Honestly. I said, but I tell you what I will do, Yisrael. I said, I have this globe. Granted stone. I said, I am a massive man. I was strong in those days, you understand. Very strong. I said, if I take this stone, and if I hit her in the head, I'm going to kill her with the first shot. I know that. I'm going to knock her out. And I said, her sins are grievous unto her. They're heavy. You could see that and sense that in her tears. I said, but I say to you all, oh, she is deservant of everything that she procures unto herself. I remember what I said. You may not, but I do. I said, uh, and her sins are much. The Torah commands us one like this should be stoned to death. You remember that young lad? But that's why I'm telling you the truth. You remember it? I do. You remember it? I do too. You remember that? Wow, that's, you had to be a baby. You remember it. I said, but I tell you what. I can't stone her. Because I am not without sin. So what I will do, I will relinquish my position 
And if you that are without sins, here's the stone. Stone her. I will take responsibility, kill her. And her tears were one of moaning because she could sense something in that man. Sure she could. I said, I can't. Because the Torah speaks to me, he that is without sin. Come on. You be the one that cast the first stone. I said, I can't cast it at her. And if you all want to take on that, you could sense a pale quietness over the whole place because no one. I said, so her sins are not imputed unto her that will separate her from Yah. So you're all right, daughter. How did you come in? I don't embrace women even. She was attractive woman. Here, give me a hug. Give me a kiss. We need men of wisdom. And a wise man, he's heard more in his silence. He doesn't talk much. See, my silence spoke more wisdom to this man than all of my verbiage could have ever spoken. You said, who in the hell he think he is? He, he ain't right. Talk to me, man. I've been around. I ain't just not that far apart. I've been around. And I've seen the charlatans and the liars and the corruption of men. I've seen it. There was one thing that I would say. I watched my natural brothers as they intrigued their wives and faithfulness. I didn't even know Yah. And I would say, Yah, if you ever give me a wife, I will never treat her like that. I will never. I watched one of my brothers beat his wife all the way down the street. And she's hollering. I, I'm a little fella. I couldn't do anything. And then the same brother, when I got old and strong, I whipped his ass. Sure I did. Nothing he could do with me. I watched that. And I would say, yeah, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to do that. I watch their unfaithfulness, the unclean acts. And I would say, I don't ever want to do that. So all men are not alike. All men are not endowed with the same wisdom. All men are not endowed with the same ability. And that's just a fact. Not all women. Not all women can cook well. There are women that can cook for any kind of palate, for any kind of physical ailment. They can cook for that. All women can. There are women that know how to keep a house clean. There are men that know how to order things and write in his home by not saying a word. Not all men are cut out of the same cloth. You may think they are, but they're not. Greetings to you all, my ach. George Davis, you that are gathered with him there in Los Angeles. Again, our nation, I greet you all. In your sure smart today. There's nothing like sound correction when Yah speaks unto his nation. Every son that he receives, he whips that ass. He first of all corrects them and then he whips that ass. This is a generation that despises it. I have never discounted the correction of a man. Even though they were wrong. Well, you're this way, you're that way, you're this way. Well, it makes me search my bosom. I want to make sure I'm not that way. I don't discount it. I've never done that. And because of that, Yah has been able to mature me and cause... I'm certainly not one that has, uh, has ascended by this ascension to a high plateau because, hell, look what we have here. And the few that with us online. That, if that's the meaning of that, uh, I have one to say to me when they saw all those that were here say, something you did wrong. Never questioning whether they did something wrong. And the same individual, listen, now he says something you weren't doing right. I didn't even say anything to the damn fool. I say, hear this man in a city like Philadelphia. And the only people he can get to come there are those that are harmless 
and he promised to feed them. And yet he tells me something I did wrong, and he can't even draw one. You understand? That stupid children. I looked at this beast, something like, you are a jackass. You're stupid. You're not even wise. But that's how people think. And they haven't done a damn thing. You that are listening, you know of any community in the name of Yah, Yoshua, please email me, write me. I will go see that man. I will go see him. I will, the first thing I do when I enter into his home, I will kiss his feet and I will wash his feet. Show me one, please. Just one. So every man can't do this. No. Every man cannot manage the skills of those that are shallow and weak and strong. Every man can't do that. And yet we have no ability to give honor to that. The Zahin that rules well, he is worthy. And you all don't hear me use that because I've never liked using that as far as speaking of me. If a man brings out the wisdom of Yah in a profound way, the Torah says he is worthy of double honor. Yah doesn't command us to honor him. That way, what Yah is saying, I got my hands on that man. He's mine. Don't mess with him. Don't mess with this preacher here, all right? You will be in trouble. I, I don't back down. And I don't say anything for jocularity because I don't need no damn lies. I don't need no damn laughter. There are men, there are women, everything you say, there's a little laughter to it. <laughs> That's folly. Folly's in that damn bosom. A wise man, he is sober. We must be sober. We must be vigilant. We must be diligent about the things of Yah. I don't give a damn who you are. You talk to men, every little thing. <laughs> you know, men are laughing. Say they don't even realize what they're doing. They're so damn dumb and they think they're wise. I'm an ignorant man. And I don't take that back for a minute. I am ignorant. But I'm not a damn sottish man. I'm not a stupid man. I'm not stupid. I'm ignorant as they come. But I'm not stupid. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to teach, there is a profound wisdom that I want to embark upon today concerning that no man can buy or sell. We must understand the, the intricates and each, each piece of this building process. What it shall produce, what it shall bring about. And if there's anyone that fails us enormously on that behalf, I have failed us. And as I teach, I am always revisiting the messages, not by listening to them, but by listening to what was uttered out of my leba, my mind, what has been accumulated by the process of passion, desire. And so I see where I miss the mark every time. And I want to bring into focus, I want to explain some things again to bring greater depth and insight for Kul Yisraya. I want us to again revisit Giliana, Revelation. Chapter 13 and verse 17. What this whole issue is about. And I'm going to incrementally bring us to this point as we proceed from this point. To show you the climactic events that shall transpire. This is not about one having silver or gold. I was reading this morning that the United States of this nation... Uh, they have this treasure trove of coins where they are trying to uh, take this nation uh, 
and move them or transition them from the paper dollar to a metal currency of a dollar. And not only do they have silver dollars, uh, but they have copper dollars as well. And so no one is telling man to buy copper. Well, copper is quite expensive. It sells well on the market even now. It always does. And here Yah raised up a man, not like the men around him, wiser, a man that had the astutious character, Yoshua HaMashiach. He was the elect one of Yah by the choosing, not through a process to compare, but he was the one from his emo womb. He was birthed with the calling. He was birthed with the wisdom in his belly, just like Shalomo, just like Eo. Those men that stood by Eo, you tell me that they were not wise men, but they were not as wise as him. Were they older than him? Sure they were. Because they said, we sat at the gates with your avats, man. And you're going to tell us the intricate, uh, eternal things of your? Yah's hand was on that man. He raised up that man for the great trials of persecution. For the infliction that will come. Those men he did not raise up. But he gave them a position in his life that they would be called his re'ach, his friends friends no greater love than this that a friend will lay down his life for friend i have seen men do things wrong i would not even criticize them and i would talk in a way that they will understand i'm talking to you you need to hear that this is a stupid generation where are the men that's why i say it all the time you can't find them I love men. I have a man's thing. I love men. I do bath. I love being around wise men. And when I'm around wise men, I get quiet. Because I know they speak with an utterance of profoundness that my mind, maybe at that time, cannot comprehend. But I would listen. As a young warrior being trained, I would always listen to men never disputed them although i knew that maybe that's not the correct fashion i would listen and from that i would garner great understanding and wisdom and knowledge of matters i would and that's the truth that is the only way you're going to get emona by hearing you can't get the power of his emona you must have confidence in him by hearing of the experiences, the testimony of those with great power that convey that to us. Faith comes by hearing. And the only way our hearing is open up, we must hear constantly uh, the Torah of Yah. There's an ark that writes, he sends offerings. He says to me, there's one thing that is constant in your teaching. It is the power of his name and Torah. He says constant there. I don't care what I listen to. That is the constant that equate with that matter. We don't need soft belly men today. We need strong men. We need men to rise up. And that's a fact. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm going to teach, I'm going to teach this again. I'm just, I want to give us something today, all right? I may teach it again next week. Hallelujah. It says in the book of Gilead, Revelation 13, 17, that through the carnage of the great demise of hell, Through the very brutal attack against Yah through a system. Whereby the very personality of Hashatan shall rise up in the bosom of man. It shall climb, climax to a degree that uh, there will be no fear of Yah. Where is the fear of Yah? 
It tells us that the yare of Yah, the trembling, the very reverence, the honor, the fear of Yah, when one has that, that is the bearer sheets. That is the beginning of all hukma of wisdom. So you cannot have the wisdom of Yah unless there is a yare, unless there's a fear of Yah. Unless there's a great honor of Yah's process, uh, His selection, uh, the way He does things. Uh, you cannot, Yisra'ya. It is that when a man begins to fear that it's one of the most powerful ru'achim, one of the most powerful ru'ach of Yah it is. That is the fear, the yare, the trembling in the presence of Yah. When a man begins to fear, yeah, he doesn't just operate in a spirit uh, so carelessly. He operates with caution. That's why I could never do the people wrong. I've done things ignorantly, but to blatantly do Yisra'ya wrong. That's why I've never done her wrong. As I've been faithful with her, I've been faithful with him. There is no charge she can bring against me. None. Not one. Not one. He's a faithful, confident man of assurance and security in whom he hopes in. And that's a fact. I don't say that to be boastful. It's a beautiful thing that we can have men around us like that. It's a beautiful thing for our young men to have those that they can pattern their lives. You don't have to act like me. I don't want you to act like me. But what I say, I want you to act upon that and allow that to enact in your bosom the strength of Almighty Yah. In my days, everybody walked alike. When you saw one walk one way, every, they all walked like that. Come on. Everybody walked alike. So you tell me we can't walk the same fashion of walk? Yoshua HaMashiach? We see a man that is lawful in the laws of Yah. We don't mark that man. We see his shalom. We see his confidence. His security broke as hell. I said to Oxim, how are we going to do this thing this week? I don't know. Our hay cut is down. What do we do? See if we can find someone that will cut hay fields. But I'm thinking most people are going to charge $25, $50, $100 an acre. We don't have that kind of money. It would be kind of silly. Instead of divesting, we must invest. Let's get on the telephone, Simeon. I'll look this way. You look that way. We look there. And without any funds at all, Yah made the provision. I know he's with me. And he walks with me and he talks with me. He imparts his wisdom into me. Sure he does. I watch the men come and go. They don't stay around me long. Because they found a different cut of a man. I'm not about that damn bull jive. I'm not about that. I'm serious. I've always been that way as a kid. As a 12-year-old lad, when my mother whipped my ass, we didn't play the dozens in 1965, 66. When Randall Stafford said, you didn't have a daddy, I commenced to whip his ass. I did. And you did not do that in those days. And my mother took the switch and she whipped my ass. And I will never forget, I can tell you where she was standing, I can take you back to the place. She was standing up on the porch. We had one of those ringer washing machines I had to wash that Saturday. It was early, you know, in those days we got up early because it was in the fall of the year. The chillness of the air was there. And she whipped the hell out of me. And I'm weeping and crying. Randall Stafford had a father. 
He wasn't much of one, but he was there. And I will never forget my email as I stood down after she whipped me. She went back up on the porch. The old washing machine, chunk -a -chunk -a -chunk. you had to ring the laundry. I will never forget as tears began to flow from me, not because of the whipping. It was the insult of what Randy Stafford said. That was the insulting thing. I asked her, can you just please tell me who my daddy is? Give me a name. And she said, boy, you want to know who your daddy is? Crude way to tell a child like that. She didn't know any better. I don't hold that to her charge. She said, your daddy's name is R.J. Nichols, boy. I can take you to the same spot, my Emma. I lied to you not. I went down between the trees, two pine trees. We had put a monkey bar on those pine trees. My oldest brother, they do pull up and chin up. We would do flips. We would do what they do in the Olympiads or, or the, in the gymnastics. We would do that in my days. All that tumbling and flips, we did that all the time. I could stand right here and jump up and cut a backwards flip. We did that because we had nothing else to do. We didn't have televisions. We are very athletic. And I recall going down between those two trees, and I can take you there if they're still up. And I began to heave in my crying. I did. I was happy to know that there was a name associated with me. That was enough for me. So on the applications or the things in school, I could put R-J-N-I-C-H-O-L-A-S. I didn't know what the RJ stand for, stood for. I only found out that when I turned 53, Rev James. I said, tell me what that's standing for. I said, that's truly it? He says, yes. And I remember heaving and weeping between those trees. And I said, yeah, if you give me a wife and children, I will never let them suffer like this. That was my healing. That's all I needed. After I cried a little bit, I knew that I had to get back on that laundry and to wash because if I had none of, then woe unto my ass. She would have not tanned me. She would have whipped me. You understand? And I knew as soon as I was finished with that, I was free to, to go, to play. With who? Randy Stafford. Randy Stafford, we're going to play football, basketball. Play. He was my next door neighbor. Let's go play with Randy. Let's go to Andre's house. Maybe Eric is there, John Thompson. Let's go play with him. You think I'm going to forsake Randy? Uh, 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 Randy Stafford? No, we were friends. I walk around with no chip on my shoulder. I whipped his backside. And I got my eyes whipped. That did not create any kind of dissension or animosity between he and I. He was still my friend. And so we played after that. Forgot about it. There's one thing about Yisrael that is sad. I, I, I love the strength and the maturity of beautiful bath of Yisrael. And strong men, I love that. I, I want that around me. Because it increases my strength. I hear men call me and they say, Well, you know what? I've been listening to you and you know what? It's iron sharper than iron. Well, I can tell they're not iron. They're not even copper. You understand? I've never said that to any man. Never in all my life. Never. They think that, Well, I, you know, you're preaching the same thing I'm preaching. No, you're not. You're not preaching what I'm preaching. I know you're not. You don't even have the clarity. I can tell in your conversation you don't even have the clarity that I have. I'm not boasting. I know they don't. Huck. I know it. I bring them here, put them up, and you will find out. You put them up, you will find out what they have, the strength of their character.
Just one. You can tell what a man has. He preaches one time, you can tell what he has. I can. Hallelujah. I don't even know how to get into my message today. I may have to go a different way, but that's all right. Hallelujah. Let me... Uh, I want to read something. That's all right. You that have joined us, we got you, okay? We got your number. Don't forget that. I want to read something here out of the book. You all just hold that. Don't worry about a thing. Hallelujah. Here's a verse. Let me read this first of all. I want to read something here. That's not what I want. Out of the book of Daniel, uh, Daniel, Daniel. There's something vitally important here I want to read. Let me read this in Daniel, Daniel, chapter, chapter. Chapter 1. I want to point out something here. Daniel, the book of Daniel. Daniel. Daniel, chapter 1. Let me read this. He that your heart positioned a nation, his people... On the one of the most ruthless reigns upon the face of the earth, on the Yahuachim, he was a man that had no knowledge of Torah. He was what one would call one that is without the wisdom and the knowledge of Yah. He was one that had no sense of the wisdom of Yah that we find today. He had no wisdom of the instructions of, of Almighty Yah. And this same king, he died in dishonor and they buried him like you bury a jackass. Yahuachim. And Yah calls him in the third year of the reign of Yahuachim. He was the Melach. And that's what the word Melach not only does it imply... King, M-E-L-E-C-H, but it bears the empowerment of those that are messengers of Yah. This man was a messenger of Yah, just like King Pharaoh of Misraim. He had called him, he had elected him, he has set him up for one thing, that's to get honor upon his name. And we have that same spirit today, uh, the Yehoiakim, uh, those that men without the wisdom of Yah. And they're going to die like it and as, without the knowledge of Yah, without the power of his instructions. Uh, Yisrael, he was the king of Yehuda. Then came uh, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Unto Yerushalayim, and he besieged the city where Shalom is taught. That's why on the broadcast you will hear me say that uh, we're in the love of Yerushalayim. It is the city where the Shalom, where the confidence and the comforts of Yah is taught unto his nation. That is why all Yisrael, especially men under the three Moadim, they have to gather in that city of Yerushalayim. Because it was the place where by the shalom of Yah, as we gather in the mind of your sure Hamashiach, and then we disperse that confidence, a shalom abroad unto Yisrael. We are great strength. We are what motivates the house of Yisrael. And that's why we should all walk circumspectly before Yah, that we would be a great encouragement and a motivator to one another. I'm not worth a damn, Yisrael, if I discourage you to walk uh, transgressing against the Torah of Yah. Every man should walk in a way that encourages a young man. I don't want to present myself, even though it's a few of us, to my young ark. 
to discourage them or to walk in a fashion that will cause their bosom to, de to be discouraged, to walk in folly and foolishness. I don't want to do that. Da, kill me, yah. You know I mean that. He knows I mean it. I'm not afraid to say that. You boastful know I'm just assured. Have assurance. In the name of Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua, we have the Teshua. In the name of Yeshua, in that precious name, every foul demon of hell must flee. That's the only name I call on. You y'all heard this wicked man over the house of Yehuda that even men will make treaty with those that are against Yah. I will not make a treaty with the man that is against Yisra'ya. I will not. Our Akshimri, he reminded us in Mishli how that a wise man, uh, his speech, his utterance, uh, he speaks more in quietness uh, than a fool in all of his volume. It's his actions. It's his deeds that speaks more. Well, I've had men to call me, I'm going to do this. I'm us. Oh, man, stop it. I don't even hear that. I don't hear it from them. I don't. I'm just honest. Because I don't want to charge them with that vow. I don't want to do that, my whole. That's not is true. So I just leave it us. All right, Mark. I like to change the subject. I like to turn to another direction. Because they don't realize what they're saying. Oh, I'll stand by you through. Stop, stop. Just don't say that. Listen to this. It says, And Yah gave Yahuachim, king, he was the Melach of Yehuda. What was the king? Did, did not the king minister, or he was not the administrator of the Torah of Yah? Sure, he was Yisrael. He stood as the corrector of all matters. That were diametrically opposing Almighty Yahweh. That is what a melach is. That is what the heavenly messenger is. He is a melach, just like the king is. The king is a melach. There are those that will use the word quote angel, unquote, but he is a melach. And he was the one that had the message of Yah unto Yisrael. Can I break that down in the simplest of terms? When Yah appointed Shalom, O king, over Yisrael, he asked him, what do you desire of me? Tell me there is nothing because if Yah is hungry, what will we feed him? Because the earth and the fullness thereof belongs to Yah. And when he asked of this man, when he was inquisitive, Yah knew what was in Shalom, he said, ask anything that you want. I will give it. He says, there is only one thing I want, Yah. I want to be a melech to know how to go in and out before his raya. And Yah said, boy, I didn't make you say that. It was there, but I wanted to hear that. And because you ask nothing of your own desire, not only will I give you that, but I will give you all those things that are associated with the power of one that is a melech, a king of great substance and great power. You understand, Yisrael? Yeah? So just to understand that, was there any man like Shalomo? Has Yah changed? He has not changed, Yisrael. Yeah? Even the world says you are your own identity, your own personality. I, I'm not like him. My look is not like his look. My physical features are not like his look. We're different in, in, in similitude and everything, but we have the same similitude of a man. The same thing. It's one thing a man's wisdom will speak volume of him. When he walks into a place, everyone will notice him. I don't give a damn if he got on dirty blue jeans. You understand? When he walks into a place, and that's a fact. We're not the butthole, we're the head, Yisra'ya. Yeah. 
And so when I walk into a place, I command it. Well, I'm just by my presence. It happens all the time, I hope. And that's a fact. I'm telling you the truth. And Yah had given Yehoiakim, you tell me this is our Rabbah? He had given the king of Yahudi into the hands uh, with parts of his vessels uh, of the house of Yah, which he carried into the land of Shirna to the house of his damn gods. You understand? And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his gods. Did he have taken the precious gems of Yah? And incorporated them with the gems of darkness or the corruption of darkness. Uh, you can't do that, Yisrael. We can't discount the hand of Yah. That's why you're sure they looked upon him like you can't be. You're not who you say you are. And everything today must be tested or tried. And this is a generation that never tried the spirit of their own heart. Never try the spirit in them uh, and see if it is of Yah. Come on, Ma'ak, you can't tell me about the power of Yah when you're lacking in the, in the things that are pronounced uh, in your own damn visage. Yeah. He'll let me die in the Imuna. Let me die in the strength of his assurance. Uh. Yeah. We need to be quiet and just listen. Quiet and listen. It's almost like your children telling you, Mama, I know how to do that. And they don't know how to do it. They don't have the same knowledge and the same strength. They don't have the same wisdom or the intellectual capacity uh, to operate in that. They don't. Not every man possess that. Not every man, not every woman possess that. And that's a fact. I'm glad too. Hallelujah. We don't have a damn thing and we think we got everything. We think we're smart, don't we? That's why we're in the mess we're in. And that's why you find that when you find groups like this get together, you begin to see the dismantling and the disarm because nobody wants to hear the leader. Everyone thinks that he or she knows more than the leader. Everyone. They have never put their hands to any test, have never accomplished anything in the process of Yah from the simplest of things. They don't want to hear the leader, and that's the problem. I've always said that. You that have just joined, I've always said that. There's one thing that the wicked will do. The wicked of this generation, they're wiser than the children of light because they're going to respect Mr. Barack Hussein Obama. They talk all that talk. But when they get in the press, Mr. Obama, can I take a picture with you and my, my babies? You can be the most staunch Republican. You can be a social uh, conservative, political conservative. But Mr. Obama, you won't take a picture with him. That's president of the United States. Ain't too many folk care that title. And you may not ever get close to a president. That's the truth. Come on, you all remember Mr. Jesse Hams uh, there in North Carolina? He was one of the most urgent uh, attack warriors against Mr. Clinton when it came to the time uh, when they wanted to rebuke that man. You understand? He did not back down. They wanted to impeach the man. And he was the most urgent attack warrior. Mr. Hams have a meeting for his social group or his, uh, for his library. He invites Mr. Clinton. Why? Because he wanted him there. He was the president of the United States. And Mr. Clinton went. And the thing that amused me, I said, isn't this damn hypocrite? I would not. His statement was, quote, I wanted my grandchildren to see the president and take pictures with him. And yet he called Mr. Clinton a vile, adulterous beast of a dog. And you want to step beside him and take a picture with that damn beast? Not me. I don't. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so when the king speaks, when he speaks his words of great volume, when the king speaks, it caused the nation to tremble. When the Sadiq is in rule, 
then the nation of Yisrael, they experience prosperity. The Berechaya. That's not having some damn Cadillac, some $500 suit of clothing. That's not having that. Their minds mature. They grow in the plethora of wealth, of wisdom, of Torah. They become more inspired by Torah instead of a damn nickel dime store. The palate is satisfied by Torah instead of a damn pound cake. And that's the truth. Hallelujah. You know, I draw analogies sometimes. It's almost like this. You know, I've met men that think that they're wise. And I'm speaking to all men. And what a man is wise, I will listen to him. I will be quiet. I used to listen to Bishop Banks. I would walk over and just sit down and just be quiet. I didn't say a thing. Never said anything with Bishop Banks. So. Never said a word. And although I was a leader, he knew I was a leader. He didn't honor me that. But I like the old man's experience in life. Above all things, it was not as much as his knowledge concerning Yah. I love the old man's experience and his wisdom with experience. I love that. He had a plethora of wisdom when it came to that life and association. I love that all the young men would go there to his home. And there are times I was still away and just sit there with old man Bishop Banks. We would sit in the swing by his house uh, and he would talk. You couldn't get a word in anywhere if you wanted to talk. And it was this experience. I garnered more out of this experience uh, than the application of some things to refine me in the spiritual realm. I did. Just his conversation was a blessing to me. It gave me hope or promise. It did, Yisrael. And so it's almost like one counseling one. And then you are guilty of the application you're counseling one of. Come on, Yisraya. I love counsel. I love any kind of counsel. I love it. I love wise counsel above all things. So he brought this in the house. And the, and the king and the melach, he spoke unto Espinach. The master of the eunuch, that he should bring certain of the bane, the elect of the children of Yisrael, and of the house of the king's seed, his zirah. He said, Now I don't want everyone. I know that the seed of the king, the Melach, they have been properly trained in mannerism and wisdom and science and knowledge, whereby the masses of the people they have not been trained they have not he said I want certain of the kings zira his seed that I may integrate my seed with that that it may cause this kingdom to abide and to stand strong during the event of the rising of a nation or nation out of them that when they attack me they will know that this is of their house that's why the king is wise. He's a melach. He's wicked. But he's wise. The children of this world, they're more wiser to do evil than the children of Yah to do what is Sadiq. Isn't that so? I want you to hear this now. He said, and of their czar or the princes, prince as well. He says, children... Does it say that in your book, Bain? Children in whom there is no blemish. You tell me they're children without blemish. That they have been trained in the proper protocol like no other children. He said children without blemish. We don't believe that today. When I read that article that Dwayne Wade, he spoke concerning LeBron James... I read certain things for the analytical ability to cipher from that uh, the nuggets of great riches. He says that LeBron is, I'm a fan of LeBron. He plays in a different stratosphere. You hear analysts say that 
His basketball, his basketball wisdom is a genius wisdom. His basketball acumen is not like no other man. His physical proudness, 6'9", 265, 75 pounds. What do you do? That's a man. That even his physical masculinity calls men to say, whoa, uh-uh. Don't take no charge from him. And yet he has the ability to recognize that. That he is in a gear like no one else. Those are great. But he has something that they don't have. And the world has the ability to see that. And we don't have a damn thing. That's why between men you always have this juvenile. The failures and fallout. Because everyone wants to be the leader. They think that they are leaders. In hell they don't even know how to lead themselves. I've never had a problem following a leader. As a matter of fact, I was not a leader. I've told you all the story. i tell it again for those that are new. When I was in the military, it was during the Vietnam era. They still had soldiers in Nam. I did not know whether I was going to have to go to Nam. They were pulling out soldiers like they do in Afghanistan and, and Iran, uh, uh, Iraq. And so, they train us with the fierceness of fighters. And in order for you to be a squad leader in basic or AIT, as you progress through the ranks of the military uh, machine or the mechanics, there are two things that you had to possess. You had to have somewhat of a above the average intellectual proudness, uh, that you had, uh, you were a little above the other recruits intellectually, your speech, your grammatics, your actions. And not only that, you have to have the physical application as well. So you have to be physically of great substance or of substance that when you challenge the men, that although there are those that could do more than you in this overall, you will outshine them in the test of, uh, of the physical feats. That's what it was. That's just the truth. And so I was a squad leader. And so my, my way of interacting with the soldiers, I, I, I wanted them to be my friend. Well, I, those soldiers, some I never, I've never seen again in all of my life. Once we left Missouri, I never saw them again. And so I would say, okay, uh, Akshimri, come on, man, let's get this. You and, 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 and Yawasa Dark and you and Zakim Birmi, come on, I'll help you. But that's not the way they wanted me to do it. Say, no, you command them. Shimri, Yusuf, uh, Yawasa Dark, get over here and get that done. That's the way they want us to talk to each other. You understand? Because in, in, in the brutal attack of war, you can't say, Yusuf, do you mind, please? With bullets all around his head. No, you got to command him. Yo, go over there and take position. Ship. No, Shepard, take that position. If you don't out. I, I didn't have the ability to do that. I wanted to make sure that uh, there was a cooperation between the soldiers. Although we, didn't, we had no fellowship. After we took off our fatigues, he went his way. And I definitely went my way. Because I didn't find too many soldiers in the military that I wanted to associate with. And that's just a fact. It was a fact. <clears throat> And he came in one day, the drill sergeant, he, he saw me, he said, Roberts, what are you doing? He said, I don't ever want to see you do that again. You command these soldiers, you make sure it's done. They do the work, you make sure it's done, and I don't want to see that again. Well, about two weeks later, I, you, you know, that's just the way I was, silly, immature. He comes in again and find me strubbing the toilet. He said, Robert, you disobeyed my lawful order, which he could have court-martialed me. I had my stripes on my shoulder. Squad leaders had their own, all the other men slept in an open bay. We had our own private quarters. When he came in that time, he said, no, not two times, not three. This is it. And he looks at me, he said, you will never be a leader. Get up. Took my stripes off my arm. Man, come on. 
You go to the PX and you got your stripes on your arm. Everybody knew you were a squad leader. Come on, man. You're saying something. To be a squad leader? You walk in the PX, everybody looking, you got that big black, them yellow stripes there, and you walk in there, and, and everybody sees that. Oh, they know you just a newbie. But man, that was a compliment. Made you walk a little different. Made you walk like a soldier. He stripped me, he busted me down, and he put one of the most effeminate individuals. He was tough physically, though. Bright kid. He didn't mind. Dave Roberts, get over there and do that. Now, you didn't ask questions, Yisraya. So this with Yah, He has chosen his leaders. He has elected them. And they're not of your inspection to inspect. He that is spiritual, judge all things. And he doesn't give a damn how man judge him. And he's judge of no man. The judgment doesn't mean a damn thing. Period. Because Yah has refined him and polished that man. He has brought him through the test of trial. He said, I want you to elect the children in whom there are no blemishes, no error, no fault, no sadistic ways, no stupidity, no deformities. He said, I want you, those men that have no blemishes, Daniel, Daniel chapter 1 verse 4, in whom was no blemish. He said, I want men that are well favored, men that are strong. The word favor, it implies men that, that they have eaten well. And they, uh, they, they have a beautiful countenance, their skin, uh, the coloration of the skin in their eyes. Uh, he said, men that are well favored. Uh, he says, uh, and skillful in, does it say some wisdom of all wisdom? He said, I want men that are skillful in all wisdom. The hukma, all wisdom. All wisdom. All of the wisdom of Yah. A woman skillful in the fear of Yah to teach and to preach that, to declare the declaration of that unto my people. Men of the da'at, of knowledge of Yah, men that can teach discernment. They must be skilled in all wisdom. All wisdom. And they must be cunning or skillful, what he is saying, cunning uh, in the da'at. They must have the power to fight. They must have the military or the skillfulness to be warriors. Can I say this? And this is no disregard to my Zakin. He's my Zakin, my leader. I would say to his Avat, here this man was 500 plus pounds. He thought that he should be the leader here. And I would say to him, hell man, you can't even work. Get out here and bust it like me. Show me one building that I haven't built in my hands. Show me something, Yisraya. I say, hell, you can't even work. You can't even walk. Now, how are you going to inspire? When we were building that shower house in Downing Hall there, there was a bulldozer that pushed all those trees down. That man would come into from work every day. And we were... We will cut trees so that my hand was numb. The one of us said to him, you go out there and cut that. I'm going to stay in the air-conditioned place here. Come on, I will come on, man. I say, you cannot lead anyone. You don't even have the physical tenacity, man. You are not. Everybody think that they're a leader. They're not leaders. So damn stupid. I said, no, can't be. I would have been ruthless to see this man come in. Working all day, and he was working hard back then. I know exactly where he was working. Tired, dirty. Shimmer, you feel like, come on, I got it, Ray, out. let's go. So what, the, I've got to work harder than him. Because he's been out working all day. That's no disregard to your avat. I'm just saying, man, you weigh 500 pounds. How are you going to lead someone? You lead by example. Your leader, you lead by example. Is your sure example? Well, then we walk in the steps, right? So when I leave this place, if I go before any of you all, you walk in the example that I've left. To walk honorably and with, with care and compassion with each other in consideration. 
You can't leave without that. I said, old man that's trying to do this work. I said, old man, you can't do it and you're not going to get it done. Oh, yes, preacher. You all told me 25 years ago. You haven't even dug a foundation. It doesn't mean much to you, old man. And this old man, although he does me wrong, I still call him. When I was headed to Cincinnati, I called this old man. He says, he, he really repented. He said, I'm coming to see you. And I'm going to call you, Maria. Although this old man, I still, I'm not that way back. I really am not. I still call the old man. He will not even call me. I like the old man. Because he said something to me when I first met him. Old as he was. He's nearly 80 years old. He said, I need your help, Rhea. Don't leave me. I know there are things that I need to get in order. Just stay with me. Because I was never going to contact that old man again. Never. When he said that, it caused my heart to be shattered. And even though when I don't want to call him, I still call him. I do. I will read this. I'm not going to go into this direction today, but I would. this is a powerful message here. All right? I want to show some small some things. that He said, these were children without any blemish. In. They were cunning in the knowledge and understanding uh, of the science, such as, has, such as had the ability in them to stand in the king's place. Uh, you think every man is able to stand before the presence of the king? And to articulate a matter? And to present a matter? It is almost like this. You find people, uh, I use this analogy, I'm not going to stop using it because uh, of us being overweight. It's almost like a fat man, he begins to lose weight. He wants to tell everybody how to lose weight. He hasn't accomplished anything, he hasn't endured anything six, seven, eight months. He drops a few pounds and hell he has the knowledge of losing weight. You silly man. And vice versa as well, fat woman. Oh, I don't eat that. I eat this. I don't eat that. Hell and what? What is it doing for you? I hate that. I've seen that. I've watched that. I've watched the attitude in the minds of this generation. They do things that are so dumb and so silly. I would never tell you. If, if I lost weight, I just, you'll know it. Then if you have a reason to ask me a question, then I will answer it. I don't tell no one how I eat. I go somewhere. Well, just give me that. I never tell anyone how I eat. You don't hear me talk about that. I eat what is proper and what I feel like is best for me. That's what I eat. And if I want some fried chicken, I get fried chicken. And I've heard about that new spice she got for the fish. I want some fish with some of that. I don't want no big fish. I want it fried. How old are you back there, mama? And you said, yeah, on the fried fish. You how old? I got a long way to go then. Give me some fried fish. How about that? Give me some fried fish. How old are you back there, mama? How old? 70? You ever eaten any fried fish? Okay, then. I want that Vaughn special plate. Give me the fried fish and the french fries. No, no. I don't want no coleslaw. I don't want no bread. Just give me the fried fish and coleslaw. We're not wise as a serpent that humbles a serpent boy. It lays still. It, you don't even know it's there. I said, to your, I said to the ark, I said when I was hauling the wood, I said, look, I, I, let me haul the wood because... I crawl up on the top of that truck one day, and that pile of wood is high when you get up there. You, you may not think it's high, but it's high. And all of a sudden, when I get up there, here goes something. Wow, can't jump from here. It's either you or me, big boy. Can you imagine that high? And something goes, what are you going to do? I can't go that way. And I'm not even about to jump off of this. I'm not running from him. No, 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 sir. And then I got all this wood. I got to straighten this out. You rise up like that on me. Oh, okay, let me. 
Just, just move carefully. Get you something. Oh, copperheads love wood piles. I'm going to bust your head. And when I went and went, boom, he screw, he slipped. Oh. No, I got to walk over that bad boy. I got to walk the length of this truck. That's all right. I got him. If he comes up, he, I'm not going to run. And if he bites me, he's dead. You understand? I'm not going to run. I can't jump. If I jump down on that truck, I'd bust my kneecap. And I wasn't even about. I will stand my grounds against that serpent. I'm not jumping. I'm not jumping down from there. No, sir. And I thought, I said, man, I, you put somebody up here that hasn't experienced that. Man, they go to run. And where they go? They find themselves. Kill themselves. I'd rather take a chance him killing me. Than me falling from there being paralyzed. Uh uh. And so when I got back here to empty the truck, when I dumped the truck, somehow he got caught between the woods back there. And for y'all to give me a little security, he left half of him in the truck. Got you anyway. You ran, but you could not hide. Yeah. Isn't that all right? Yeah. I wasn't even about to jump down on, and that. That's high up there, Yisrael. If you think that's not high, I tell you what, you get up there and look down. You, that high. And I'm standing on top of that wood and it's unstable. You don't know which way to go. Come on. I want to show something here. Men that are able to teach. He said men that stand in the king's palace. Uh, who they might teach the learnings and the tongues uh, of the Chaldeans. Uh, that they will teach those the ability to speak in the language uh, that when they come before the king, that's what the Torah does. It teaches us to speak in the Hebraic or the language of Yah's love, Yisrael. We speak in the same language of Yah. It says, and the king, the Melach, he appointed them. He appointed unto them a diet, a dietary law. Yah has given us a dietary law. He says provisions of the king's meat. And of the Yayin, which he drank, special wine. He did not just give that to anyone. He did not just give his meat to anyone. Everyone cannot afford to buy Kobe beef, can they? Because you pay $350 a pound. A little steak like that will cost you uh, probably $300, $400. Why? Because they only sell about 10,000 cows a year. If that many. And it's only to the very choice restaurants in America. So you go buy a piece of Kobe beef that big uh, for, for you to have. Uh, you, you're going to spend, uh, you're gonna spend $40 or $50 for that meal. So his food was a different food. And yet, are we eating the king of the food? How do we eat? I can't eat if when I go to the dining hall unless someone prepares it for me. I don't know how to fry that fish like, uh, like my chod, uh, Yoshoshana. I don't know how to fry fish like that. I can't throw that fish like a whole boss here. Yeah? I said to her, hey, look, man, I know that show is show, but she knows how to hook that. Fry me some fish. And you know, just like you fry his. I can't fry fish like that. Doesn't even taste like that. You shaking your head like that. Okay. You agree. Doesn't even taste like that. I don't care how mama tries to do it. Almost incriminating someone. I don't want to do that. <clears throat> Her intentions may be well. And she loves you. But it ain't not the same. I honestly don't care what you say. And so not the ability of all men the same. The ability to extrapolate, to dispense, to pour. It's not. Well, what about you? I can go before the kings. And those in power. I know how to. Believe me, I can walk in among them and they will turn their heads. You both say, now, nah. I know what I'm saying because I've done it before. I know what I'm saying. That's the truth, son. That's the truth. Hallelujah. Those that have been nourishing the king's meat and the wine of the king... He said, I want you to nourish them. Look at this now. He said, for a period of time of three years, uh, 
And at the end thereof, they may stand before the king. Now, how can one stand in the presence of Yah, or stand as an oracle of Yah, or stand in the might of Yah, without being nourished? What is the nourishment of Yah? It is just reproof and rebuke. It is just, most men today have never been corrected. You are going to tell me I know as much as you know, but then neither one of you know a damn thing. That's why you banter and combat each other on the same little insignificant issues. You never mature, you never progress. Uh, when a man progresses mentally and spiritually, you see it in the application of his physical walk as well. Uh, when one puts it in their mind, uh, I don't give a damn, come hell, uh, I have water, I'm going to lose weight. Uh, you see it not only in the physical being, uh, but in their mind as well when they talk. It's one thing that Evangelist Hartsfield said to me, he said, Brother Roberts, and I'll never forget, at that time I was in college, he said, you see the sign of the hand and the head over, the, that, that, that was the depict, depicting of, of, of education and knowledge. And he taught me something one day, he said, son, everything, every physical thing in its physicality, it all denotes a spiritual ramification. He says, so son, be very observant of everything you see, because it has a spiritual implication. It has derived from the words of one's mouth, and the words of one's mouth, there is always life to it, because when they speak it, they began to act upon it, they caused it to come alive. Someone said, I want to start a business. They began to speak, they began to talk, they started a business. You understand? So he taught me something very valuable I have never forgotten. These are nuggets that he put in my heart that I will never forget. And the only way I could learn that to know that the, I had a wise master teacher before me. He was a wise man. And to be able to wash his feet was a great honor. Don't, don't, I don't want you washing my feet now. I don't want you doing that. All right. Don't do that. Hallelujah. Can I proceed here? So it took a course of time for them to even be able to stand before the king. Here we come out of this rutty wickedness and we think that we... You, you, you find a young man today, he comes into a certain amount of knowledge. Two, two or three years, he, he knows as much or more than the master that taught him. Where he been strengthened. And so he can only relate in his own uh, mentality of the level that whereby he has grasped things. Uh, whereby this man, his level is far above that. Why is it that, that there are those that are scholars and, they, and their scholarship, they have ability greater than you or me? Why can't we acknowledge that? I used to say to those young men at IBM when they would say, oh, oh, oh David, uh, they would apologize for me. Uh, oh, oh, David, my education means nothing. I say it does. I say, you have travelled through much opposition. You have shown the tenacity of great uh, perseverance. Oh, when I would lay it out to those boys, uh, they didn't know how to handle me. They would literally call for me. Come on, come to my office, man. Let's talk a little bit. You and me, come on up here. And then I would turn some of them, their cheeks red as blood. Because I would speak like this. You're wrong, man. How about that? You're not ignorant, I say, you're ignorant too, man. Can you explain to me the dynamics of aerodynamics? Or give me a little knowledge on Einstein theory of relativity. Talk to me. <laughs> I, I know it's that. I said, I can build. Can you build? So I'm not offended because I'm ignorant. This damn stupid generation is stupid. And I don't take it back. I'm not offended because I'm ignorant. What a great honor. What, what, what does that make me do? Can I tell you? It makes me rely upon the plethora of wealth and wisdom and knowledge of others, their strengths. As I said last night, we have to rely upon these ark. What a great blessing and the gifts of those. So if I can do anything to alleviate, because we need all we can get, just that little, the littlest, sincerity of each one is the ingredients of the accomplishment of everything the flower doesn't say to the master with a whisk i don't want to be mixed with eggs and the eggs say no 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 sugar at this time precisely they mix every ingredient together the flower doesn't make or incorporate the ingredients for the cake 
It is the master, the one that has the ability through trial and error, through baking, to understanding the technique and the ingredients, how they incorporate, how they blend at the right time. And this is a generation that discounts that. They are children of Yisra'ya without any blemishes. They are sincere. Evangel Hartsford said this to me. Yeah, I use analogies like this because there are things I haven't forgot. He says to me one day, he looks at me and says, Brother Roberts, I want to tell you something. <laughs> mm -hmm. He had this protruded gut like that. He would lay his hands. He could lay his hands upon his gut. You know, he was big too. <laughs> He said, there are people that have never heard of the power of this testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach. But they keep the Torah of Yah blemish free, perfect. And all of their actions, and all of their activities. And here I am dumb, like... I didn't throw it away though. I held on to that. I wasn't even up to that level to understand what he said. I wasn't. But I didn't discount it. Now I understand. By and by, when we oh okay, I got it. Okay. By and by, when the morning come, we'll understand. Okay, Mama, I, I just see. I was going to add words in there and, and just make it up as I went along. That's just me. I don't retain words. That's how. Ignorant I am. I don't retain words of song. Even the songs that they sing, you all notice that I'm off key and I sing because I sing not by repetitiveness. I sing from here. I sing what they like, what he has put in me. You can come up here and play any kind of music I can sing. And I have you clapping your hand. I don't need no lyrics. I don't need to write a damn thing. I, that's right. I can open the book and start singing just from what I'm reading. I don't need it. I can sing any kind of song. I don't need no music. He can come up here and play any kind of music and I can sing. And you'll get up too. That's a fact. Hallelujah. Because it's real to me. Hallelujah. I want to close here. I want to read this. Let me read these verses quick. It says, now among these men were, I, I like this because I don't like that shit like Meshach and Abednego. It says, for among these men was Canaan, yeah, which is Yah has favored. And also there was Mishael, which is, uh, who is what Yah is. That's what he was. Mishael was, who was what Yah is. And there was also, as you say the word, uh, Ezariah or Azariah or Azariah, it means to help, to succor, to help. And see, Yah is their help, that their names imply that not Belshazzar and the name of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that Nero is king. Damn those names. They're pagan as hell. These are the names of power, that's right, and magnitude and strength. Use the names given to out of their damn gods. Is that right? Sure, he is right. He said, On whom the princes of the Urah gave names. See, they gave them names. And he gave unto Daniel Belshazzar, which has really no meaning. It has no understanding of the clarity of the meaning. Uh, and Hannah, uh, Hananah, or Shad Shadrach, uh, and, uh, and also uh, Mishael, uh, he gave him the name uh, Meshach. And uh, Azariah, he gave him the name uh, of, uh, of Abednego. See, Nero, Nero is king. Uh, he is the one of power. All right? If you want to learn anything, learn the proper names. All right? It said, but Daniel, he purposed in his life. You tell me there are no men that purpose in their heart to stand with Yah, to mature, to elevate themselves in the knowledge of his Torah. He purposed that he will not defile himself. But take not what you eat. Well, eat some swine meat and see what happens. You defile yourself. Well, it's not what goes in you to defy it, but what comes out, I know you're defying uh, what Torah commands you. You don't eat the damn swine's meat. Uh, you don't lay down and wall in the folly of silly, foolish men uh, and women. You don't do that. 
We don't sit, sit around with jocularity. And men are always laughing. and There's a humorous side to everything. It's just, well, I've always been that way. I don't give a damn. Then your way is not Yah's way. You need to change that. You need to change the way you do it. It's an insult to Yah. And I don't like to insult my Abba. I see my flaws every day. You don't have to tell me. If a man would judge himself, he will have no need that no man would judge him. I don't need you to judge me. Because my standards, believe me, they're going to be higher than yours. That's a fact. Because I'm going to bust me. Believe me. Why? Because if I keep my own, if I get the small thing, if I get the beam out of my own eye, then my ark that has a small moat, I can see clearly how to help him. I can see clearly. So when the wood is heavy, that load you all put on the other day, that was pretty... I had cut every piece too. Why? Because I know what the agony, what they go through out there. I did that to show them, I appreciate what you do, man. I'll unload this. I bless you. I would have got shimmery, but I said, no, the man works every day. I, I, no, I got this. I had mama to bring me one of my protein drinks and Sherry and Sherry bring me a banana because I can't get, I can't eat a steak at this time of the day. I can eat that Von Von, yeah, that chicken and that fish is Von Von. We're not changing that. The Yashashana chicken shack is Von Shack. That stays as that, all right? Okay? Von Shack. We leave that alone. And so I could not have no Von Chicken that day. Not, not, no, no, sir. And so they brought me a little something to eat, and I said, it's time to roll. She says, what time are you coming back? I can gauge things. I said, I'll be there by 1.30. And I was there before then because I know how to work, and I work in a way to accomplish things. I know what is important. I could have just cut them in half. I could have basically unloaded that. But I know that these are must load it again. And then prevention, one of the hope goes out there and try to put something that I don't like that. There are things I don't want the hope doing, period. There are certain things I don't want them doing. And that is one of the things that, I don't want them doing that. Not over there, you understand? I don't want them doing that. Period. And so in cutting the wood, I could have cut it big. But now I cut it so that if he has to get it, or my Ach Yosef, if I have to go get it again, that is cut in sizes that they are manageable. So always consider the next one in line, Yisra'ya. You always, I've learned this in life, you always accomplish and do. Or the process that is before you, you make it better for the one that's coming behind you. You make it easier for them. And then when you make it easier for them, they appreciate. And then they will make it easier for the next. And then everyone, it will be easy. And the one that bears the yoke, that one takes a great sense uh, in one's ability to give all uh, for the betterment or the experience of all. What's wrong with that? That you lay down your life for all. You sure did it. Is he not our example? Then why should not we do that? Why should we not do it? Did he tell all of them to feed his sheep? But he told Kephar. He told one man. He said, when you are converted, when your mind is right, feed my house. You get them all right. He raised up one by the name of Shaul. Although he had not walked with him, he was a man of knowledge and wisdom. When he withstood Kephar, would they not walk with him? He withstood him. He said, I know, listen now, I'm not a bit behind you in the knowledge of Yah. His example spoke. It's not his damn mouth, the power of his example, his, his physical being, his strength spoke greatly of whom he was. That's why an Ish, he's more than just a, a name that we say Ish. He has a phys physicality, a masculinity. He does. I get on that next week. I won't mess with it this week. I'll show us. I'm a word searching king, man. I'll search words. Don't tell me you search words like me because you don't. I know you don't. You read and that's all you do. That's it. And you ought to be glad that y'all granted to a man to search out the etymology. 
I'm always searching at the origin of words. And I, this is not sufficient here. I'm not talking about Wikipedia and that damn trash. You got such a, an amalgamation of everyone's concept and thoughts. I'm talking about going back to the originality. I love doing that. Because it brings clarity. Because there's no word that is created. That's why Yah only had 3,600 words in the Hebraic language to express and to bring about the pure shaha, the worship, to him. And what is this language? 15,000 words. Your basic vocabulary is around 300 words. The, he, she went there to Walmart. Everybody got that in their vocabulary. Walmart, Dollar Mart, Kmart. That's all right. I got, when we get to Cincinnati, I say to Ahot Raphael, look, the God, Walmart. That's what I said. There's a Walmart, girl. Did we go there? Can I confess? Sure we did. We went to Walmart. Sure we went to Walmart. Had to get some stuff. It is just cheaper there. Went to Walmart. Verse 8, but Daniel, he purposed that he would not eat the king's portion or the king's meat nor drink his wine. Therefore, he requested of the princes of the eunuch that he might not defile himself. Now, Yah had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the princes, prince of the eunuch. When Yah brings you into favor, love with the man, there's nothing like being loved. You, you, oh, some, you know, it's nothing like a man loving a man. Nothing. Really. Because that is one of the most difficult things to cause a man to love. But when a man loves a man, when a man loves a man, he knows that he loves him. It's, it formulates a different mentality. There's nothing like a true man's love. That's why son always desired the passion of his avat. Mother's love is beautiful. But there's no love like the father's love. It's all, not only is the commanding love, but it's the demanding love. You know, yesterday, little uh, Ashna, of course, the little girls, I'm, I'm spraying water, get back. And of course, I realize the more I spray, the closer they're going to come. And Miss Ahava, she, oh, she, and Sherry, I don't even mention her. Of course, Miss Dainty, she was somewhat a little more pristine. She did not want to get too wet. But of course, Miss Ahava, she said, spray it on. I like that. Spray it on. So it dawned on me, the more you spray at them, the closer they're going to come because they want you to spray the water on them. So I take them in the field here in the park to show them the, what I'm going to do. I say, now this is going to be a big old sandbox with toys and this is going to be a deck here. You're going to be able to go all the way to the pond and fish off the deck and all of that and this I'm going to clean this up I'm going to get all this it's going to be a beautiful place I'm going to put you some bridges here I'm going to put some tree houses here you can go up there it's going to be done right so you don't fall down there. and you can walk across there and say look Abner look at me we're going to have a ball you understand I already have the vision and so he sees me and uh, I'm going on the other side to help Oxymion and he says to me his words Papi where are you going? Oh boy, don't do me like that. Almost I said, well, I want to take you with me, but I know I got to work now with Oxymion. He said, Papi, where are you going? It was clear. Ah, uh, that's enough for me. I know that's his son, but that's all right. It still costs my heart to calculate. That's all right with me. Hallelujah. So it's a beautiful thing to have that kind of a man's love. It's nothing like a man's love. Nothing like a man's love. It's a love that is, it's, it's nothing like it. And when a true man sets a true love from another man, he will do nothing to hamper that or to damage that. What you have met today is just superficial damn individual. They don't know how to love. Hell, they don't know how to love their wives. They don't know how to, you know, it's, they don't even know how to be kind to them. So how in the hell are they going to love, unless they learn how to love their wives and love themselves, how are they going to love me? Some of my love from my, I want them not, no, no, I, I don't want it in words. I, I want them to sense that from here. I want it to come from them, man. Yeah. When they put that hard chest up against mine, I want them to know this hard is. I want it from them, man. 
no doubt about it. Because I cherish that kind of love. I do, Yisraya. Folks just don't know me. Well, if I be around you, I'll learn you. You won't learn a damn thing. You've been around your wife 15, 20, 30 years and you haven't learned a damn thing. You still treat her that way. Go to hell, man. Hell, you haven't even learned your wife. You haven't learned what makes her happy and satisfies her to be kind to her. So don't give me that damn bull, okay? Go to hell. That's what I said. Go to hell. You take that to a jackass. You don't bring that bull to me. You can take that to someone else, but don't bring it to me. All right, then. We all get quiet on that one, then, okay? I, I, I better be quiet because I don't want Mama testifying against me up here and say, Hallelujah. <clears throat> Mama knows I will straighten her out. She knows it. And then love her the next minute. Is that right? True. Why? Because she has to represent my strength. She's the beauty of my strength. She is my meekness and kindness. You're kind of staunch and cold. I know I am, but she's sweet. Tell your husband I had a hard night last night. So you have for don't. And so when the woman said that, my heart was smitten. I want to close here, Yisraya. So he brought Daniel, Yah, Yah did. That, this was, Yah has to do this. He has to bring us in favor with man, Yisraya. And he gives us favor. He said he would. He would give us favor with man. Just like he did Oxymion the other day with this man on this piece of equipment. He gave him favor. He would give us favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuch. And the prince of the eunuch said unto Daniel, Daniel, Yel, I fear my master, the Melach, whom have appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your face worse like the children which are of, uh, of your own sort? He said, Yisrael, you're suffering. And if he see your face like this, he's going to know you're not eating well. Uh, there's much that is expressed in a man's face, his brows. You can tell a man what is in his brow, he, he, will not, he will not accept that. My grandmother would say, get that damn look off your face, boy. Could not they discern that... Uh, in the 60s, come on, Ark, you're a child of the 60s. I, I can read your dog. I know you play. You heard that everywhere. We had the acute ability to discern, make judgment that people knew. We were right. This damn generation defies that. Why is my you make an assessment? He says, let, I'll ponder that. I don't reject that. I was saying to one the other day, a man said to me one day, uh, yeah, he's lusting after them. I didn't fight against him. I did say, you're a damn liar. But I took it to heart. I said, Yah, guard my heart. Guard it from that. As the world's identified, I had fine holes out there I could have had. That's a fact. I'm not just saying that. But the world called fine. They weren't fine to me. You understand? Driving nice cars, too. Nice rides. You understand? And he said that to me, I said, yeah, that's all right. It made me honor those that he said I was lusting for even more. And made me never, I've never been caught by myself with any woman. I learned from old Billy Graham 25 years ago, not to ever counsel a female alone. And I've never done that. Yeah, I learned that from old Billy Graham. The devil he is. But I learned that. You understand? Mm -mm, you don't do that. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Too many men messed up on that one. She gets to crying and she's smelling, smelling like the roses of Sharon. Uh, of Laying on your shoulder and you find yourself doing something you ought not to have done, man. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Come on, mama. You sit here with me. That's right. These damn weak dogs will do it. Shut up a door. I remember there was one that was fellowshipping with us. We would go. I've gone to the community. And I walked in one day. He's in there with another man's wife with the door shut. I say, man, look, let me see you. Don't do that. Don't ever do that. I know that you have camaraderie, but don't ever do that, man. That's another man's wife. Don't you ever shut a door with her in there with you like that, man. That's wrong. And his wife would always say this. 
when I would visit them, I would speak things that he didn't know. I knew, but I knew, but I didn't know, but I knew, but I would speak the wisdom of the matter. And she would always tell my Isha, Riyach Dawid is a wise man. When he comes, he always speaks with such wisdom and the things he say, he's right on. So it's wonderful to have wise men and men wiser than you. How about that? I'm not offended because a man is wise than me. I will sit down and eat from his table. Hallelujah. And the prince, he said that, I, and the prince said in verse 10, uh, he said you should look at, at them, verse 11, because I want to get to one verse quickly, and I'm going to close here, yeah, I'm going to close. Then Daniel yell, uh, he said, verse 11, to Melza, whom the prince of the eunuch, who has sent over those that were of his nation, verse 12, he says, prove, he says, Sarah, test, as Zachin has brought out to us by the ah, uh, or the Ish of Yah, the fire of Yah. He says, Sarah, test thy abet. I beg you, ten days now. That represents the ten tribes of, uh, of the northern kingdom of Yisrael. That brings us into the wholeness of Yah. He said, and let them give us just that which is pulse or being mixtures of peas to eat. And he says, give us the Mayam to drink. Then let our countenance be looked upon before you uh, and the countenance of the children that eat the portions uh, of the king's meat that thou should deal with your servant. So he consented to them uh, in this matter and he tests them ten days. And at the end of the ten days their countenance, their ponim, it was perfect. The word ponim, uh, it expressed perfection. It also expressed, uh, it expressed longevity. Uh, Olam Viet, it expressed uh, antiquity. Uh, he says, and their countenance appeared fairer, tifera, more beautiful, uh, and fatter. And fatter. They had a beautiful look on them, fatter, in flesh than all the children which did eat the portions of the king's meat. Uh, you could eat the dam of the tables of Hashatan all you want to. Uh, I will take the crumbs, as the one said to Yahshua, even the crumbs, even the dogs, uh, these are the crumbs that falls uh, from the master's table. Even the crumbs of wisdom uh, will make me wise uh, and fatter in my countenance, uh, more fair than those that think that they are wise. Uh, Then Melza took away the portion of the meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them nothing but that parish of pulse of, uh, of, 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 of just like uh, some green stuff. All cookware is almost melting. It's just a mesh of just googly goggly. It certainly isn't like the fried fish and the fried chicken or the roasted venison or gazelle meat that the king did it. As for these four children, these bane of Yah, as for these four children, Yah gave them knowledge. He did not give it to all. He gave them. He gave them da'at, and he gave them and skill in not some learning, but all learning. There are men that have the ability to articulate in many matters. Not all men have that. In all learning and wisdom of the hukham, of the hakam of Yah. And Daniel Yael had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuch brought them before Nebuchadnezzar, and the king communed with them, and among them all, 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 among all of them, and among the whole Kabul, there was none found like these four individuals. So you tell me one that other king's house says, uh, I, I, I'm as wise as you? That's why we have missed the course so greatly. Because we don't honor a damn thing. Even the king honored them. Even the king honored them. There were nobody else like them as they stood before the king. And this is what they were wise in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them. 
Was the Melach wise? Sure he was. He was the one that brought them into his house. Uh, and he was the one that surveyed them and said, this one uh, is ready. And they inquired, uh, and that the, the king inquired of them. Uh, and he found them ten times better than all, than all, than all, than all. Uh, we don't want to think that someone is better and better equipped than us. There are men that are better equipped than me, that are much more better equipped than me. There are men that are much more better equipped than you, uh, and much more powerful than you. You dumb jackass of a poor spirit, uh, think you're tough. Uh, you think on a real deal he's going to beat me? Uh, he, all I did was stay out there, and uh, what happened, he come out there and say, you, you won't hit that. I, I didn't let him have no free shot in the sense. I kept my hands up and waved him. Try to throw him off. He was busting him down too now. I had to back him down on two baskets. I said, boy, you're getting a little too far ahead of me. You understand? So I had to back him down. And, uh, and I said, I got you. I said, you still don't have what your daddy got. He said, <laughs> you're going to find out, preacher. And then he ring one from outside. He take all the jumpers he wants to. No lamps, buddy. And he ring one out on me. And he goes down and hit the pavement. And I paid for that this morning, too. I, I, I rolled over and I thought my kneecap, I, I didn't know what had happened. I said, oh, don't move too fast. That's the truth, son. I got you, though. I got him. I got him. There were no other like him. No other that all of his great men and all of his wise counselors it says there were none. All of his magicians and all of his scrologists were all in his realm. Why is it that there are those that they're not in the same realm? Why is it that the world can identify that, but we as Yisrael, we cannot? Everybody's not in the same realm. You may think you are. I watch men, I watch one day, and I, I want to close with a Zakin, this dismissed as Zakin Yaramia. As I said, we, we got what we call a Smith machine over there. We, we about wore the cable out just doing pull down. And I will go in there. The only reason I'm doing that because it takes me too long. It takes me 18 minutes to do a thousand pull down. And it's just boring to me. It would take me 18 to 19 minutes. And I feel like I could be doing something else. I can get better results doing something else. Because you're not going to get them abs unless you... Unless you you eat a certain way and i'm not I, I like von fried fish and fried chicken and bossy as a whole brim fried head and on give me that just being honest with you and of course i would get in there and to me a thousand reps and i remember one coming in they they did some because i had 90 95 pounds on the bad boy they come in there oh this is easy i said isn't that something now, if he did 200 of these in the morning, he couldn't get him out of the bed. But it's easy. That's the way we think. Oh, that's easy. I can do that. Uh, that's the way we are. Have no understanding of it. No wisdom of that. If he did 200, he could. That night, he would wake up in the middle of the night crying. Like, Whoa! His gut. Sure it would. He couldn't get up. And I just looked at the individual and said, boy, this is a generation I met this preacher, he, he, there was a Mexican preacher, and of course we were talking about, yeah. So we go to the gym, I was showing him a little bit around the place. You know what we have on the bar over there. You show, oh, you live with man, oh, ra, ah, da, that's very nice. And so I said, yeah, I, I can, oh, you can't do that. And so I, I dropped down on the bench and I bust it out for him. I'm not going to tell you how many. So he, his boy gets down and he says, all right, they began to talk in Spanish now. Can you, oh, I can do that. I can do that. It's okay. I said, I'm not going to have you. This fall on your neck. You're a dead man. Period. Boom. And you sue us here. No, I was going to have that. So he drops down on the bench and I'm right. I am not. Not I am. I'm right there. At the whole, uh uh. Because I know what's going to happen. Your little arm you go, it's going to break. You go, you're going to. That's what's going to happen. So he picks it up. He didn't get it up. He put it back down. So he began the communist. And I said, this boy, I'm not going to let him crush his, his, uh, his uh, casophagus. I know what will happen. Mm -mm, and not on us. So he goes again. He picks it up and he holds it up just a little longer. He puts it back down. He, if he had tried to bring that down, 
he would have been in trouble. Now, he thought he could do it because he doesn't realize for 25 years I've done this. For 25 years over, I've done this. So a man walks in the gym, he thinks he's going to go in that bitch 300 pounds. He's never done that 400 pounds. Well, I can do that. So we think we can do what everyone else does. We can't. It's a beautiful thing that he has a place, 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 and then all of that makes it a perfect work. Isn't that beautiful? That's what I like. I don't like to micromanage. Anyone knows me. I don't like that. I like to delegate and you, 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 you take the creativity to get it done. No, I don't like that. I don't like to say, do this and do that. I hate that. I'd rather men see what has to be done and they get it done. That's the way I am. I've never liked delegating. I like for them to understand the vision. They have the mind. We have the same purpose. They will understand the vision and they will say, okay, I know what to do. When I come, oh man, that's, that's, wow, that's, whoa, that's straight, man. I like the way you're doing that. Oh, that's wonderful. That's what I like. I've always been that way. I'm like, you go over there, do that, you go over there and do that, you go over there, do that. It takes too much energy. Because I can use that energy for something else. May Yabarak, you all you that have joined us, I will continue on next week. This was just a talk for Yisra'ya. We all need this. And at times, uh, and that mother will sit me down and say, we're just going to talk. You see what your brothers are doing? I don't want you doing what they're doing. My mother will always say before she dies, she said, I never have to worry about you. I said, why are you worrying about them damn fools then? Don't worry about them. Let them do their things. I said, that's not going to help you by worrying about them. She said, I wish they all were like you. I wish they were like you. I was saying to one other day that my, my natural brother, he, this man was a drunkard all his life. He didn't even know what love was. He looks at me one day. I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there. He looks at me. He says, look at that big bastard. He would always call me that. He thought he could whip me, Wesley. I grab him one day, I say, little man, if I grab you, I had some big arms back then. I say, little man, what are you going to do? He would say, big bastard, you got to let me go. And once you let me go, I got you. That's the way he would talk to me. And yet, when, among his compadres, when they're drinking, when I come, put it up, give him an offer. Man, I don't want you $3 you all going to give me because I'm about to give you 10 back. I don't the $3. No, 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 take this offering, preach. And I would take his offering. I think they would. They would always give me an offering, 2 or $3. I don't even want this dirty money. It's dirty. I don't even want to handle it. But I would always take it. He would always make them give money. If I give a dollar, he would do that. And so one day he's looking at me. He said, look at that big bastard. Look at him. He's a big bastard. Look at him. Big. Look at you, big bastard. He's just looking at me. My Isha sitting there. Look at him. This big bastard. The man didn't know what love was. So he looks at my Isha. He says, you know what? That big bastard, he loves you. How could a man who never experienced love know what love is? He said, that bastard loves you. He does. Yet even to a fool, he could realize what was love. Even though it was an immature, silly love without any berry of fruit to it. Even a drunken fool understood what that was. We greet you all, Yisra'ya. May the riches of God rest upon you all that have joined us today. This is, this is just talk from the heart today. We'll get back, all right? I'm going to teach on, on next Shabbat evening. Uh, are there any female Melachim? I want to, there's an ark that called me about the matter. I say, it's a damn lie. I will show you. But there's a verse that says that I'm going to explain all that. I'll show you what it says and what it implies. I will teach that. And once that teacher, you will say, oh, that is so right. So we greet you all in Yeshua's mighty name here in the heart of Yerushalayim. May the riches of Yerushalayim rest upon you all. Arzachin, Yaramaya, you will come with the last words. And maybe give us more inspiration out there. Come on, Mazakin. Ya Barak, Shalom, Shalom. Ya Barak. Hallelujah. Let us all take heed, Yisraya. The words that are spoken are very wise with wisdom. We must all have the ability, Yisraya. To draw up. What is that? Being able to consume the Mishvah, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, whether it's spoken from the book or from wisdom. It is all tough. It's, it's like a dry towel. 
Well, what's that paper towel bounty or when you have a, a tough towel, a good towel? You got some towels that don't soak up anything. You can lay it in the water, it almost lay above the water. But when the towel is right, it absorb everything. No matter whether it's water, it could be soda, it could be oil. We need to absorb what well, Yahweh speaks into his house. He speaks to us by his wisdom, by his understanding, by his misfire, Yisrael. We as a people many times we want to resist things because oh, I don't like that. We want to resist that. But you don't realize what you're missing. I absorb all that was spoken on today. Whether it's all just with the, by the words written in the Torah or from a man of wisdom, it's all told to me. It's all told to me, Israel. So let us absorb. Let us, Barak Yahweh, even for this beautiful day that he's given us. Let us stand to our feet, Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahweh, he's given us so much. Why should we resist what he gives to us, Israel? He's given us breath. He's given us life. So let's give back unto him the praise that is due unto his name. Hallelujah. I'll be Yahweh, we barack you for this day, this beautiful day, a new day. It's a day we have never seen, and we know we'll never see this day again. For everything you give unto us, Yahweh, it's renewed and it's new. Just as your mercy and your ahava are renewed every morning. We do barack those that have listened this day by via live stream, and those that have come here and gathered at Teshua. We do barack you for them all. Take them back to the appointed place at the appointed time. And Yahweh, let your Amalekim, your messengers, account around us that we remember, that we zakah all that you have spoken, all that you have given unto us. And all things we do barack you in the precious mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do declare. Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh, Yahweh barack you all, Yisrael. Hallelujah.